Hello everyone and thank you for being with us for this day two of our Rudy Reload 2021 event. Today we will be talking for this session uh, about um, um, working with news and live content uh, from, the, from the web. Indeed, we know that news um, nowadays happens first on social networks and it's really important for editorial team to efficiently work uh, with content coming from social networks and from the web in general. And uh, in the second part of this show, we will talk about recording uh, from uh, live sources, which can also now come uh, from the web. Uh, so that will be the, the topic for uh, the second part of this, uh, of this show. Uh, to discuss these matters, I will have uh, three uh, guests uh, today, uh, we will first have Quentin Lom, the CEO of our partner Nunki, who will tell us uh, uh, more about the search engine uh, in Nunki and also how to use AI to automatically detect events and cover breaking news. In the second part, we will welcome uh, Antoine Baloge uh, from Wooly Technologies, my colleague, and uh, Ozan Genzer uh, from our partner Libero Systems to show us how Intuit Live can help you to record uh, sources coming also uh, from the web. Uh, just before we get started, a quick reminder about our announcements that we uh, uh, gave yesterday during our first session. Uh, we introduced a redesigned product line where you have uh, four new Woody products uh, to help you. Uh, we have Intuit Access for the manual ingest by journalists and operators. Uh, we have Intuit Exchange for all the automated workflows uh, uh, across uh, PAM, MAM, storages, uh, web, and more. Uh, we have Intuit Social that we will be mentioning and showing you in a minute uh, for uh, work with content from social networks and from the web, and Intuit Live for the recording of all kinds of live sources. But now it's time uh, to start the first part uh, of this show, how to, how to use open data sources to produce news content. And for this uh, first part, I'm happy to welcome my first guest, uh, Quentin Lhomme, the CEO of our partner Nunki. Thank you, Quentin, for being with us today. Hello, Aurélien. Thank you for the invitation. No problem. We are really, really happy. Just before we get started, a uh, quick reminder for you who are watching us. Uh, during the entire show, you can use the chat box of the live event to ask your questions. Quentin and our other guests will be here until the end of this show to answer your questions. So please do not, uh, do not hesitate. So Quentin, maybe to get started, can you give us a bit of introduction about Nunki? Of course, so Nunki is a tech company specialized in open sources analysis at scale. And uh, we are providing two main solutions. The first one is the one that uh, Intuit Social uh, is, uh, is using. Um, it's a search engine uh, um, offering the ability to search, to filter, and to verify user-generated content on different social networks at the same time. Uh, and the second one is an event detection technology that uh, leverage uh, technology and uh, artificial intelligence in order to detect events as soon as possible. You have mentioned open data sources. Uh, what is it that you mean by open data sources? It's very simple. Open data sources are basically sources that are publicly available. So it can be TV news, it can be um, governmental data, it can be business reports or financial reports, financial projections. Uh, but most importantly, and that's the kind of data that we are using um, for our use cases, uh, everything that you can find on the internet. So it can be online articles, uh, blogs, and most of all, uh, social networks, of course. Okay, how, how, uh, why is it important to work with these sources for editorial teams today in 2021? In 2021, it's very important to use uh, user-generated content and open sources to, to cover the news. First, because um, news agencies and media groups can't have reporters everywhere uh, on the ground. So that's the first reason why um, um, user-generated content are useful, because everyone has a smartphone and has the ability to um, take a picture, to take a video, and to share it online in the blink of an eye. So that's the, the first point. The second point is that even when the reporters are on the scene, like uh, the example of the Capitol Hill attack a few days ago, um, user-generated content are offering another kind of um, angle, um, of point of view, and uh, they are providing real value-added information aside from uh, the, the traditional uh, 
um, journalist, uh, journalism uh, coverage. Okay, I get it. So first we will uh, focus on the, the social uh, search engine that is integrated in the, our, uh, into its uh, social uh, solution. Uh, what kind of searches are available in the Nunki search engine? You have two kinds of searches uh, that allows you to search uh, simultaneously on different social networks. The first one is the ability to search filter by keywords. Uh, so you have uh, the possibility to use several keywords at the same time, to combine them, to exclude some keywords, and for Twitter you also have the ability to have access to extended um, features, like for instance the possibility to search by languages. Uh, secondly, you can search by location, which means that you can draw a perimeter on a map and um, retrieve the contents that are located uh, within this uh, geographical area in real time. This feature is particularly used uh, for breaking news coverage when you don't really know what kind of keywords you have to, to look for. Yeah, again, the Capitol Hill yeah. uh, use case, you want to know what is really being posted from, from this area and not uh, just the post of everyone commenting what, uh, what is happening. Exactly. If I know uh, some, some users, uh, some, some specific persons that are uh, especially influent or relevant for a certain topic, uh, how uh, can Nunki help me to follow what these people are saying on the, on the web? Alors, you, sorry, you can, uh, of course, uh, follow some lists of Twitter accounts. Uh, and basically, you can organize your list as you want, like by topics, like politics, for instance, security, and so on, um, or by other kinds of categories, like location, countries, regions, and so on. Um, and you can create as many lists as you want, and you can follow and monitor as many accounts as you want. So it's very convenient to, to follow lots of uh, Twitter accounts and to organize uh, this, uh, this monitoring. Uh, what kind of sources are available right now uh, in the, the search engine? You have four uh, social networks. Obviously, Twitter is the main one, but you also have access to YouTube, uh, Vcontact, and Vimeo. Okay. Uh, I know that there are some features in Intuit Social that can help to verify the information or to do some fact-checking. What, what are they? Yeah, the, the, the platform is also commonly used for fact-checking. The first uh, reason why is that you have access to extended information about the post itself. Um, for the post, for instance, uh, you can have the ability when it's available to have access to the location. And if the location is available, you can uh, have access to uh, Google Street View embedded directly in the platform to compare uh, the post and Google Street View and uh, see if those two environment and geographical areas are matching. So it's very important for fact checking. Um, the second reason is that you have access to a feature called reverse image search, and it allows our users to um, search images and see if those images are original ones or are took from somewhere else on the web, like another Twitter account or an art a news article that was shared uh, a few years ago about something else. Yeah, we know that it happens a lot that uh, during news coverage, uh, there are some things, some mistakes where uh, we think that the, the, the picture is the one of the event and uh, it's reali we Definitely. realize afterwards that it was uh, uh, already posted on many, uh, on many websites uh, uh, long ago. So Intuit Social is really, uh, really helping with the, the, this fact checking. Yeah, and you have also the ability to search by location. Uh, so when you heard about a uh, um, breaking news story uh, that is occurring, uh, you can run a search by location and see all the content that maybe doesn't have the right keywords, but uh, that are coming from the people, uh, the, the witnesses that are on the scene. Great. So um, the, the search engine powered by Nunki is really uh, one great feature for the editorial team in uh, Intuit Social. Uh, we have another feature that is uh, useful for the journalists and also for the interest operators. This is our, our web browser plugin that you can use uh, in, uh, um, in Intuit Social. And here you can directly uh, select content from any uh, uh, social post or any website that you are navigating on and you can uh, say that you want to ingest uh, this content and to uh, make it available in your newsroom system and in your production asset management system. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do with the results of the Nunki search or with what you have found by yourselves uh, on uh, internet is to get this content and all, this all the related metadata uh, available in your newsroom system and uh, in your production asset management system. So uh, Intuit Social is really offering both sides uh, uh, of uh, the story, the, the search part 
and uh, the ingest part, and uh, then it can really help uh, all the editorial and technical teams uh, to save uh, a precious time. So, um, Quentin, can you tell us a little bit what are the, the news in the Dunkey search engine for the Intuit social users? Yeah, so we are working in agile mode with our customers, and based on the customers' feedback, Uh, we um, enhanced a lot of features, like, for instance, the user interface is now perfectly matching with uh, their needs. Um, we also um, perform um, amelior ameliorations about the user management system, uh, which now allows our users to save searches and to have their own filters. Uh, so it, take, it saves them a lot of time, uh, thanks to the new uh, UI and this new user management system. Great, thank you. So that was about the, the search engine that is already integrated in, into its social. Now we will go a little bit further in uh, the other activities of, uh, of Nunki that can also be uh, useful for uh, Woody customers. Uh, this is about uh, automated event detection. Can you tell us uh, uh, what you mean by event detection, what it can do? Yes, so we are developing a technology that is analyzing open source data at scale in real time in order to detect events as soon as possible. The idea behind it is that there is millions of content shared every day, uh, and among those millions of content, a small portion of them are really valuable and are related to an occurring event that has a real informational value. Um, but we can't do that manually. We can't analyze all those content manually. So uh, we are uh, developing our own technology to detect those events and to provide early alerts to our customers. So it's a kind of um, artificial intelligence that is analyzing all these sources and uh, yeah, um, selecting what is uh, relevant for me uh, to, 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 to do my job. Yeah, considering the, the, the vast number of content to analyze in real time uh, um, uh, to detect those events uh, and to detect this small portion uh, of, the, of content that have, uh, that, that have a real uh, value, uh, we are using artificial intelligence at different levels. The first one is that we are using artificial, uh, artificial intelligence uh, to filter the noise, which is... Uh, really yeah, because important. there is a lot of unrelevant content. That you the vast majority of the content are not really relevant. <laughs> so uh, we are filtering the noise by uh, using uh, machine learning and deep learning, and then we are enriching those contents um, in order to understand better uh, the quality of, of this, pieces of, this piece of content. Um, so it means that we are looking, for instance, the location, uh, the topic, and so on. Uh, and then we are using uh, the artificial intelligence in order to aggregate all the different signals, all the different contents related to the same event together and provide uh, qualified alerts. So it means that if I'm a customer, I will tell you what, uh, what are the events I'm interested in, the kind of events I'm interested in, uh, the kind of sources that I value as relevant sources, and based on that, you will train your uh, AI to, to notify me when something occurs. Yes, so we are providing two ways of working, like um, we are providing um, generic use cases, like for instance, natural risks or disasters, um, terrorism, criminality, and so on. But also, we are offering the ability to customize and train our machine learning models to fit perfectly with specific needs, like for instance, for local media that needs uh, a very specific attention to one region, uh, we, can, we can do that, yes. How, how is it useful for uh, uh, the media companies, for the editorial teams? So there's a huge interest among the news producers uh, for this uh, technology because it allows them to first uh, detect even faster uh, compared to the traditional ways of uh, uh, monitoring what's going on in the world. Secondly, uh, they have access to early signals and it means that they have access to the original tweets, the original posts that are shared online, which is very valuable uh, nowadays. And finally, uh, this technology allows them to detect and cover events that may not be covered by traditional uh, ways of monitoring what's going on in the world, because, as I said earlier, everyone has a smartphone and everyone is uh, able to, to share content online and to share videos and so on. So um, with a, one tool, they have access to, to the world.
Yeah, there are many more sources of information right now, and uh, uh, the tools that are provided by Nunki yes. are helping to find the, re the relevant one and just to access all uh, these uh, uh, sources of uh, information. Thank you, Quentin, for giving us uh, an insight of this uh, event detection technology and, and platform that uh, you've uh, developed at uh, Nunki. Again, if you have questions about what you've just seen and heard, use the chat box, and Quentin uh, will be back with us uh, in a few minutes after the second part of this show to answer all your uh, questions. But now it's time to uh, uh, start the second part of uh, the show and to welcome our other guest. We will now talk about live recording of web sources. And for this uh, second part of the show, I am really happy uh, to welcome uh, our two guests, uh, uh, Antoine Baloge, uh, project engineer at uh, Woody Technology. Hello, Antoine. How are you doing? Hello, Rolia. I'm fine. And we also have with us uh, Ozan Genzer, live from Istanbul. Uh, Ozan, uh, you are uh, calling us from uh, Liberal Systems, our close partner for the development of uh, Intuit Live. How are you, Ozan? Uh, all is good, Aurelia. Thank you. Great. Thank you uh, to both of you uh, for being with us. Uh, now we will uh, see how Intuit Live can help us to uh, record uh, live sources, but more specific live sources from the web, because this is the topic of this, uh, uh, of this show. Antoine, can you maybe start uh, quickly telling us uh, what kind of sources are generally available in Intuit Live? Yes, uh, in Intuit Live, you can record various kind of uh, streams. Of course, you can record uh, SDI streams, but there is also a possibility to record NDI streams and uh, web streams. We also have an option to record uh, signal from a uh, tape uh, con controlling video control. So you, you mentioned NDI sources. What kind of uh, use cases are we covering with the, this feature? Uh, with NDI sources, you can record NDI stream from camera, for example. You can also record uh, Skype or Skype have an option to broadcast uh, NDI stream. Team meetings too can be recorded, and soon we will have a Zoom call that can be recording using this NDI technology. There is also an option to record screen capture once again with this NDI technology. Okay, so that's uh, really interesting because Skype recording, uh, Teams meetings uh, recording uh, are really happening over the web. Uh, uh, so uh, it can really be really helpful to, uh, um, to record these kind of sources along with the traditional uh, signals that we have. I assume that uh, uh, various formats are available and that uh, we can uh, deliver to many targets. Can you tell us more? Yes, we can record from AZ to 4K format, and all these formats can be delivered at various kind of um, and name systems. Uh, in the program, you can ask you to add system metadata, and this metadata will be preserved all along the workflow of the final system. And of course, like uh, all the products, uh, the edit what you need, that allow you to start editing in your editors while still uh, recording. Uh, on the server, you can work with that with uh, Media Composer or Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so integration with uh, media asset management systems, uh, with editing software, as we have in the old uh, the Woody products, the all the Intuit solutions, and uh, also edit while ingest, which is of course very important when we are talking about uh, live sources. Uh, I think Antoine, uh, uh, you will um, show us a little bit of uh, Intuit Live uh, right now uh, with the with the live demo. Uh, first, uh, uh, can you show us generally the the user interface of Intuit Live, and can you uh, record this actual event that we are broadcasting right now? Yes, of course. Uh, the idea is uh, our interface is a web-based interface, so it means you can access it from any place uh, on your network, and it can be used by several users at the same time. Uh, I'm currently connected on my server, and from my user interface, I can control uh, two different servers. Uh, there is two ways to record a, a stream, or you can schedule a uh, stream whenever you want, or you can also start a crash record. Uh, in my case, uh, I anchored the, this live stream directly on my server, and you can configure which live stream would, stream would record. So I configure my live stream on it, and uh, I will be able to record it right now using this crash record option. So uh, I will just select a profile and then adjust uh, metadata. 
to the Selecting event, for example. A profile that corresponds to a specific destination, uh, adding the metadata, and then sending the, the recording. Great. Uh, a quick question for uh, Ozan as we are looking at this. Ozan, what are uh, the, the protocols that we support uh, for web streams in Intuit Live? So actually, we are currently UDP, RT, RT, HMP, HLS, MPEG Dash, SRT, and the DVP compatible SRT protocol in Live Ingest. In addition, we have the possibility to, to record YouTube live signal, as Antoine said. Great, thank you, uh, Ozan, for uh, adding this. Um, I think also, Ozan, the support of 2110 is coming soon? Uh, yes, uh, 2110 support will be available in one month from now. That's great. And uh, we announced yesterday that there is a new feature uh, named the continuous recording uh, for uh, Intuit Live. What, what is the continuous recording, uh, Ozan? So actually, continuous record allows you to specify uh, fixed length recording that records continuously. There is a possibility to define a duration for the each segment when the fixed length you specified is reached, then the live in just did your current record and to continue to recording again. So if you have a permanent stream that you want uh, to, to cut in PCs, uh, like a news agency's feed, live news agency feeds, or very long event, that's uh, a very useful feature. Uh, now, Ozan and Antoine, I will ask you both to help us uh, demonstrate how we can uh, record a remote interview. So um, uh, if you are interviewed by Skype, Ozan, could you, uh, could you call Antoine uh, with uh, Skype? And uh, Antoine, could you show us how you record that uh, in Intuit Live, please? Sure. Yes, now I am sending my Skype call to Antoine on my mobile phone. Okay, I received your call and uh, the server is configured to automatically answer. So uh, on my server, I can now select uh, NDI stream and I have all my Skype uh, streams. So I will be able to select all the caller or the receiver or the active speaker. Skype uh, gives some, uh, some permission on it. So I configure my Skype stream and I can instantly record my stream to my production system. So now, Ozan, I'm recording your stream and I will push it to the, the production systems. Okay. And All these streams are available uh, to, to edit it. Okay, so you can start your editing, as we said before, in, in Avid Media Composer or uh, in, in Premiere Pro uh, directly while it's uh, being recorded. And as we have uh, all these different signals uh, from Skype, uh, you can, of course, record the different participants to uh, to the to the conference. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, I, I indirectly have uh, my, my Ozan Skype recorded and it's available in my uh, Media Central Cloud UX environment, so I can start working with it on my on my editors. That's great. That's really great. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Ozan, uh, for uh, uh, playing the role of the interviewees for uh, this demo. It's really nice to, to have you uh, uh, with us uh, today. Uh, we will continue a bit with Antoine with a few other questions, but thank you again, Ozan, and uh, talk to you soon. Uh, Antoine, could you tell us a little bit how it works in terms of uh, deployment, uh, hardware, software configuration? Um, you can use both. It depends what you want to do. Uh, if you want to record from SDI stream, you will need an hardware appliance that we can sell. Uh, we have certified hardware appliance. But if it's only for recording NDI or web streams, you can work on a soft only uh, machine, and this machine can be virtualized. Okay, great. And um, we have talked about the continuous recording as a new feature. We've talked about the 2110 support that is uh, coming soon. Are there other new features that you want to, to share uh, with uh, our viewers today? Yeah, we integrated a, a new player that allows you to replay uh, events re already recorded. We also have uh, improvement of our VTR control coming and uh, controlling of third-party ser video server like the Harmonic Spectrum servers. Yeah, controlling of uh, third-party servers is very interesting if you want to build a complex uh, environment where you will mix uh, different kind of sources like traditional um, SDI sources plus 
uh, other capabilities added by uh, by Intuit Live uh, possibilities. So uh, thank you, Antoine, for this, uh, uh, all these, these new features. There is something I want to add to that, is that we are uh, going to make more announcements very soon. This will not be only about recording feeds, uh, but also about converting uh, stream formats. And that uh, I'm sure will be very helpful for our customers uh, to, to see that and that will come uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Uh, so uh, thank you, Antoine. You, you stay with us uh, because uh, we probably have some questions uh, in the chat box and this is the time of uh, your question is now. As uh, you are uh, uh, typing your, your questions, I want to take the, the opportunity uh, to thank all the team that have prepared uh, this show. Uh, the Woody team, of course, uh, that has been working uh, on this show all these last, uh, all these last weeks and, and days. Uh, Maria Meli, uh, Sophie, uh, Jeremy, uh, and all the others, of course. Uh, also, a special thank you to our sister company, Luxiris. Uh, Luxiris has prepared and is managing all the live graphics during uh, uh, this entire uh, Woody Reload 2021 event. So thank you very much, guys, uh, for uh, for your work. Uh, now I will uh, uh, welcome again Quentin uh, to answer uh, the questions that we might have about uh, uh, the Nunki uh, part. And we still have Antoine uh, with us uh, uh, for the questions. So uh, what are the, the questions that we, uh, that we have uh, today? Hello, okay, thank you. <laughs> What kind of events can we uh, detect in uh, uh, the Nunki uh, search engine, Quentin? Yeah, so we can uh, detect uh, several kinds of events. Um, like, for instance, I was talking about natural risk. We are working with uh, the French authorities to help them to detect uh, natural risk in real time uh, and have as much as information uh, available uh, about an event uh, dynamically. So that's the kind of uh, events that we can detect. Obviously, we can detect other kinds of events like uh, uh, terrorism, criminality, mm -hmm. and so on. Okay, great. Um, maybe we have another question. I don't have enabled tweets. May use my location and think most of my contacts and delete that way as well. Are those posts without location? Uh, in keywords, invisible for you, or can you get them somehow? So if, if a, a tweet is not uh, located, uh, can, can you still detect it? And do you have other, uh, other ways to detect it? So if the, if the tweet is not located, you can't retrieve it uh, with the location, obviously. But you can search by keywords, or you can follow uh, the, the, this account uh, with the list. OK, great. Maybe another question. Will there be an automatic ingest in Woody Social possible now? If yes, under which conditions, parameters? So maybe I can answer this one because it's about the, the uh, ingest part. Uh, and so um, uh, we are thinking about introducing some uh, automation to automatically uh, process the data that is being detected following the, the criteria of your searches or uh, that uh, other mechanisms that we can put in place with uh, 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 with Nunki. Uh, so we are considering it. That's not uh, available yet to do this automatically, but that could come in the future. Now we have to see how much volume we have uh, of, of content, because of course you cannot predict what will happen. So let me look at the next question. Does the Nunki AI also create metadata about what is ingested? Uh, like, uh, are you enriching the content, not only retrieving the content, but also enriching it? Yes, we are enriching the content uh, for several kind of um, stuff, like the location, for instance, uh, and uh, the topics, uh, like uh, like uh, Tobias. Uh, so you, you you can identify that this is related to a certain topic, and you can add this as a metadata to, uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. the content. Topic and um, uh, events. Uh, okay, also. and re uh, link that to yeah, a specific to event. So tag uh, yeah. if there is a I don't know the event uh, riots in Capitol Hill, yeah. you can tag the content yeah. with this uh, uh, with this event. Okay, great. 
let's look at the next question. Is there an API available in the Intuit Live so uh, we can push scheduling information and create uh, ingest jobs? So yes, there are APIs generally available for uh, all the, the products and uh, uh, also for uh, Intuit Live. There is a database uh, of the, the scheduling, the scheduled events uh, that can be fed by uh, this uh, by this API. So uh, that's that's the kind of workflow uh, we can imagine if there is another uh, system that is uh, uh, knowing or requesting uh, some uh, recording jobs. How the, does the licensing model work uh, for Intuit Live? Maybe Antoine, if you are still with us, uh, you can answer, answer this, uh, this question. How is the, the licensing model for Intuit Live? Yeah, it depends of uh, what kind of, uh, how many channels you want to, to use. Uh, it's based on channel support. Uh, it can go from one to eight channels per server. And it also depends of the, the appliance. Uh, if you want to use SDI, you will need a hardware appliance that we can sell directly. Or otherwise, if you just want to record SDI or web stream, you can use a, a virtual machine. So it depends of your, of your needs. Yeah, but generally, depending on how many channels do you need and how you want to, to split them across different servers. Uh, do we still have questions? Uh, so if you post capital in my keywords, if I post capital in my keywords, you would present the tweet af as if I was there. Um, so um, there might there be a confusion uh, if I just talk about something or if I am really somewhere. Yeah, uh, I understand the confusion, but uh, regarding the detection, uh, we are just providing uh, con contents that are shared unseen. Uh, so that, that's one of the, 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 the work of the AI. Mm -hmm. uh, it separates the comments from the content of the witnesses that are on the scene. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing. Um, so yes, that's, that, yeah. that's it. So for the basically, you choose, not for, if you want to, to find the content per, uh, uh, based on the location, of course, the location can be yeah. determined if we know it. Yeah. Or it, otherwise, it's more about the thematics of Capitol Hill. And in that case, uh, we will find the, we exactly. will find the content exactly. based, on the, based on the keywords. But we can tag then and, and uh, uh, link it to the, to the event. Yeah. Do we have more questions? Do you, and if yes, how recognize trends in social posts? Uh, so I can maybe answer the first part, yeah. and maybe you can add something. Uh, in Intuit Social, we are already offering the view of the trending topics from Twitter. So that's uh, uh, already a feature that we are retrieving the trending topics per region for, from Twitter. So if you have, a, the, the, you have the list of trends for the US, the list of trends, uh, for uh, France or for any any region, uh, and you can start a search from these trends. So that's the trends uh, which are uh, already uh, detected and uh, um, um, provided. Sorry, by by Twitter. Yeah, and regarding the event detection, that's we are we are trying to do exactly the opposite. Uh, we are not trying to to identify the trends because it's too late, but we are really trying to identify early signals. So the trends are available in, in um, Intuit Social, but uh, in the, regarding the event detection, we are trying to get rid of the trends and to detect early signals. Yeah, before it before becomes, it becomes a, trend, a trend, because yeah. it will become a trend, but the idea is to know before. Can Woody, uh, can in, Woody Ingest Live be upgraded to Intuit Live? Uh, hi, Darren, thank you for your question. And thank you for being with us. Uh, yes, of course, uh, there is a migration path for all existing customers. Uh, uh, Intuit Live uh, is the, the logical uh, um, my, uh, transition from, uh, from uh, Woody Ingest Live. And uh, let me add that this will happen at no cost for all uh, the, the customers uh, under support contract. So I think it's the end of uh, this Q&A uh, session. We had a lot of questions. Thank you very much for sharing them uh, with us. Uh, if there are some questions coming later in your mind, uh, just be in touch with us through uh, our uh, brand new website where you are watching this, uh, this live event. So you can use the website and request a demo and we will be happy to organize uh, uh, something very tailor-made for you uh, and answer uh, all your questions and be, be in touch with us. Uh, I will uh, thank uh, Quentin uh, for being with us and for joining us today. And also uh, Antoine, uh, uh, project engineer 
engineer Antoine Baloge. Thank you very much uh, for uh, do, giving us this, uh, this Intuit uh, live demo uh, today. This is, uh, we are coming to the end of this session, but Woody Reload 2021 is not uh, over. Uh, we have a last session later today uh, where uh, we will uh, discuss about recent customer uh, successes and customer stories. Uh, uh, with our very special guests. Uh, we will have uh, Stéphane Sassano, the CTO of uh, Canal Neuf with, uh, with us. Uh, Canal Neuf uh, is in Switzerland and he will explain us how uh, Woody uh, tools are helping them. Uh, we will also have uh, Thomas uh, Bayer from Quest Media uh, talking about the nine network project in Australia, a very uh, nice uh, project uh, that uh, we've achieved with our partner Quest Media recently. And we will have Craig Riceberry, our director of sales uh, in the US um, telling us more about the US customers. So uh, I hope that you will join us for uh, this, uh, this next session. And meanwhile, uh, uh, be well and talk to you soon. Thank you very much.